What's up people of the internet, I'm the big boat here with yet another video. So I wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas, I wish you all happiness, peace, luck and love and that Santa Claus gives whatever you desire. For this year's Christmas special, you people voted for top 10 best games for a potato PC. Now I have a terrible PC. It's a 7 year old Lenovo laptop with the Intel Celeron N2840, 2 cores, 2 threads, 1 megabyte of air, 2 cache, 7.5 volt TTP, stored on a 2006 mobile core 2 duo, even everyday tasks are tough for it. Its integrated graphics, the Intel HD graphics page rail, are not just your typical weak Intel HD graphics, oh no, they are weaker than the GeForce 210. The laptop also has 4GB of single channel RAM and a slow 5400RPM hard drive at its disposal. So yeah, it's awful. If you ask what games can you play on such a low end PC, many are gonna tell you, haha, do you seriously think your piece of trash can run anything? Well, I'm gonna tell you that on these exact specs that I just mentioned, I can play a lot of games smoothly on top of that. Now, I'm not talking about Warzone, or Alan Wake 2, or GTA 6. Instead, I mean games that are older or less demanding. All the games that you will see in the video are recorded internally for my low-end laptop except for one. And you can find the full description of the laptop's specs in the video description down below. Do you also have a terrible PC and you can't think of good games to play on it? Don't worry, you've come to the right place. Here are, in my opinion, the top 10 best games for a potato PC. Number 10 Assassin's Creed Rogue Now, I know what you're thinking, bro, why the heck are you including an Assassin's Creed game in this list? These games are poorly optimized, and I absolutely agree, these games have poor optimization, as is the case with most Ubisoft games to be honest. Well, with the exception of this one! That's right, in the pool of the horribly optimized Assassin's Creed games, Rogue stands out as the ladder, especially when you consider that it came out in 2015 on PC. I mean, I'm playing it with shadows, reflections and anti-aliasing enabled and it still runs well, what the hell, how could that be possible? In fact, the only reason I placed it at number 10 is because it requires DirectX 11 support. So please check if your graphics card supports hardware DirectX 11 acceleration before considering to download this game, because there might be some people watching this who have a really old PC with a GPU that doesn't have DirectX 11 support. The gameplay is similar to the one in Black Flag and it follows the story of Shay Patrick Cormac who defects to the Templars and helps them hunt out members of his former brotherhood after becoming disillusioned with their tactics. Overall, definitely check this game out if your GPU supports the X11, highly recommended. Number 9 The Sims 2 The Sims 2 is, well it's a life simulation game, it's The Sims, what do you expect? And I know I could've included The Sims 4 or 3 instead of 2, but the thing is, Nowadays, The Sims 4 is quite well and CPU intensive, especially with all the DLCs. And The Sims 3, although being older, is poorly optimized. I remember downloading it a long time ago and it took literally half an hour to load into a new game for some reason. So I guess that leaves The Sims 2 only. I know the gameplay looks quite choppy, but that's because I had to record it with Bandcamp. Don't use Bandcamp by the way if you have a slow CPU for gameplay recording, but it actually runs quite well on my PC at low settings, and it doesn't take too long to load for my external hard drive either. I'm playing with it all the DLCs by the way. You know what? You might still well stick to the Sims 2 even if you have a high-end PC, because let's be honest, the Sims 2 is just much better than The Sims 4, even with all the DLCs. Like, 
the amount of details that the Sims 2 has in comparison to the latest game is insane. You can search up some videos on that topic to find out what I'm talking about. Sure it's an old game, from 2004 to be exact, but graphics aren't everything, gameplay is more important for god's sake. Number 8 Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 As you guessed, this is a soccer slash football as we call it here in Europe game. Personally, I'm not a fan of sports games, but I felt like I had to include this one, as I know a lot of people watching this video love this kind of games. Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 in particular is really well optimized given that it came out not that long ago. You could run this game smoothly on even the worst modern PCs out there. So go check this one out if you love football slash soccer. And there are mods out there that modify the game to be more up to date in terms of teams and players. Number 7 Fallout New Vegas Fallout New Vegas is an RPG game developed by Obsidian Entertainment but published by Bethesda, of course. It came out 2 years after Fallout 3 in 2010 but has very similar graphics and gameplay to the previous game. You play in a post-apocalyptic open world consisting of parts of Arizona, California and Nevada in the year 2281. You make friends and enemies among various factions and ultimately end up caught in a conflict that will determine who controls New Vegas. The game is also very well optimized and runs smoothly on a wide variety of old and low end computers, including mine. I played with no issues using medium settings, albeit at 800 by 600. I've also played Fallout 3, and if I'm honest, I'd say New Vegas runs better than 3, despite coming out later. Oh, you know, I must play if you're into RPG games, but you have a slow PC. The game has a wide variety of weapons, enemies, activities and other stuff like that and is probably one of the greatest RPG games of all time. Oh and did I mention that there are a lot of mods for it? Number 6 1v1.lol Do you know Fortnite? But your trash PC just isn't enough for it. Oh, no problem then, we can use GeForce now. No. You have to wait 5 hours for a 1 hour session and then repeat unless you give the motherfuckers who Nvidia 20 bucks a month. Ugh. Thankfully, 1v1.aol is here when the world needs it the most. It's a battle royale game, obviously. Even though it only has 2 maps that aren't very large and host up to 16 players only and the graphics are much blockier than the real deal. The game has pretty much all the core gameplay elements of Fortnite. The pistol, rifle, shotgun, sniper rifle, health and shoot potions, zone shrinking, building, skins, you've got it all. Hell, even the interface is kinda similar. I swear, this game is like a god's gift for low end gamers. I play it with no issues whatsoever on my worse than 2006 Call to Duo Celeron N2840 and this was an amazing match by the way that I recorded from it. Overall, if your PC struggles to run Fortnite, don't bother with any low end tricking or GeForce now, just go ahead and download 1v1.aol and have fun. The game is available on Steam and it takes up less than a gigabyte of your storage. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the game is completely free to play. Number 5 Counter Strike Source As you probably know, recently Valve decided to shut down CSGO in favor of their new Counter Strike game CS2, which was the absolute dumbest thing they could have done. My low end PC was already struggling to run CSGO properly thanks to the crap ton of unnecessary updates they did. And now it's CS2 which struggles to run even on some high end PCs because it's poorly optimized. How wonderful. I mean, why the hell does CS2 even exist? It's the exact same thing as CSGO but with glorified graphics. Oh, Thankfully, Valve hasn't decided to shut down the older Counter Strike games. That includes 1.6, Call of Duty 
condition 0 and source, which we are going to check out in this video, at least for now. So there is still hope if you can't play CS2. Sadly though, the old CS games, including Source, are paid. But there is a way to get by if you want to play CS Source, but to live in a poorer country. I'm talking about 7 Launcher. Sure, you have to play with the Russian comrades, but personally, I don't care about the nationality of my fellow players. It doesn't bother me. I could still have fun, even if I have to play with Russians or North Koreans or Afghanistanis. Yeah, number 4. Half-Life 2. Now to the game that showed off the Source engine at its best back in the old days, with the second Half-Life game, the legendary first-person shooter classic by Valve, released in 2004 just like the previously mentioned CS Source. It's among my favorite games and you should definitely play it if you haven't already done so. The game, of course, follows the story of Gordon Freeman after the events in the 1998 Half-Life, which you should also play by the way, who ends up being awakened 20 years later in City 17, housing the Citadel, which serves as the headquarters of a multi-dimensional alien empire known as the Combine, which now rules the world as a result of the events in Black Mesa. Not only does Half-Life 2 have interesting gameplay and storyline, but it also served as a stepping stone for future games, with its amazing for its time graphics and groundbreaking physics. It remains one of the greatest games released of its genre, if not one of the greatest ones ever, so yeah, it's another must play for people with low end PC. If Half-Life 2 alone isn't enough for you, you can also check out episodes 1 and 2, as well as the first Half-Life and its expansion packs. Number 3 Call of Duty World at War I'm a huge fan of Call of Duty, especially the old Call of Duty games, but I decided that World at War should take the third place, because it's my favorite old Call of Duty game, and the reason why it's my favorite is just the way this game portrays World War 2 is like insane. From fighting the Japanese with their Banzai charges and snipers on the trees, as well as taking out those fucking PT bolts, to making you wear in Stalingrad against the Germans and then fighting them in Berlin, and that scene where you have the honor to place the Soviet flag above the Reichstag is just epicness, man. Of course, I'm not leaving aside the other old Call of Duty games, including the original Modern Warfare Trilogy and Black Ops 1 and 2, which are also absolutely worth playing, by the way, even in 2023, but something about World at War just struck me hard. I had the honor to finish this game on the Celeron N2840 at 130fps average, I think, with low settings, so it should also run well on your slow hardware. The game came out in 2008 for reference, which is actually when GTA 4 came out low. You can also check out the other old Call of Duty games, which also run fine on the Celeron, and as I said, are also really fun and worth playing. It's up to you. Number 2 Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 Fun fact, I'm also a huge fan of Need for Speed games, because they made up a large part of my childhood, and I swear, I said it before, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 is my favorite racing game and will remain so in my opinion. I mean, who doesn't love that iconic BMW M3 GTR? which you ironically drive only in the beginning because that piece of trash Razor decides to sabotage everything, forcing you to make your way through a blacklist until you finally come to take revenge on that guy and take back your legendary M3 GTR. Admittedly, this game can become a bit challenging as you progress further and further with longer and in some cases frustrating races as well as challenging and intense police chases that test your driving skills to their fullest, but for me, this game will always be fun still. And hey, it's 100 times better than the 2012 reboot! If Most Wanted 2005 isn't enough for you, you can also check out the other old Need for Speed games for the mid to late 2000s, including Underground 1 and 2, Carbon, which is a continuation of Most Wanted 2005 by the way, Pro Street, Undercover, 
or even shift if you need to realistic races. For me though, Most Wanted 2005 is simply way too legendary and iconic to leave it aside, even in favor of Underground 2 or something like that. And hey, it runs amazingly on even the greatest threats of computers, and so do the other old games from the series, so yeah. It's one of the best games out there for your terrible computer. Before proceeding to number one, here's an honorable mention, Minecraft. Now, the way Minecraft runs depends greatly on what version you're using. For example, if you've downloaded the Bedrock Edition, you could probably play even the latest version of the game absolutely fine, even on an other potato like my Celeron. But if you play Java Edition like I do actually, you might want to go back to an old version like 1.7.10 or 1.12.2 because in the new versions you will probably face extreme stuttering and low FPS problems. But the thing is, I can play the latest release 1.20 on my low end laptop kinda well actually with not that much freezing and stuttering using uh, Optifine and low enough settings, and by that I mean two chunks and a reduced resolution. Oh, and also memory dug to uh, RAM optimization program. I could even get some nice looking shaders to work, and not too badly on top of that, which is honestly absolutely insane if you think about it. So perhaps Minecraft Java Edition doesn't run as badly as people claim that it does on a weak CPU, Or maybe it does, because there's still quite a lot of freezing when you first create a map. But hey, we're talking about optimization here, so it's definitely the horrible chunk building causing the poor performance. Definitely not too slow as a snail processor. Number 1 GTA San Andreas Not the defective edition! You guys probably expected GTA to be number 1, didn't you? So, GTA San Andreas The game with our N-word CJ in 1992 Los Santos. You already know about this. Insane how time flies. San Andreas came out 20 years ago and we already have the GTA 6 trailer. But perhaps if you have a super low end PC which can't run GTA 4 and 5 smoothly, maybe going back to the good old GTA San Andreas isn't a bad option until GTA 6 comes out on PC in 2027 or 2028 I think, by which point many of you watching this should, hopefully, have a decent PC at last. Because who said GTA San Andreas isn't legendary anymore, huh? This game will always remain legendary, together with GTA 3 and Vice City, it has everything, a lot of missions, the most out of any GTA game if I'm not wrong, many details that in some instances GTA 4 and 5 don't have, Iconic storyline, you have it! So if you can't stand the poor optimization in GTA 4 and the memory leak problem in GTA 5, go play some of the old GTA instead, because it's still worth it. And a professional tip, stay away from the defective edition, it's one of humanity's greatest mistakes. So these are, in my opinion, the top 10 best games to play on your very low end PC. Of course, some people might disagree with some of the games chosen and I completely respect their opinions. If you have some other suggestions for games that run really well on a potato PC, comment down below so that more people know, including myself. Once again, I wish you all Merry Christmas if you celebrate it and until the next one, it's a bye bye from me. <laughs>